All right. So in this group of videos, we're going to learn how to prepare a merchandiser's financial statements. Those are a little bit different from the ones we learned in chapter one of this course where we looked at um, the financial statements. If you go back to that chapter, you'll see they were all like service oriented companies. This is a company that sells stuff and the income statements look a little bit different. The rest of the financial statements should be pretty familiar uh, and pretty uh, similar to what we've seen. Specifically, what makes these ones uh, interesting and challenging is these accounts here. So not only do we have sales, we also have sales returns and allowances, and we may have discounts as well. They don't in this question, but discounts are just treated the same as sales returns and allowances, as we'll see. And we also, and this is a real key, we also have cost of goods sold, which is super important to the format of an income statement for a merchandiser. Beyond that, I, I think there's very little to fear here. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing here that goes very far beyond what we've already learned in financial statements, but these accounts I've highlighted certainly will make uh, life more interesting for us in preparing our financial statements. So we're gonna start with an income statement and that's probably what we'll do in this video and we'll break it into three parts, uh, income statement, statement of changes in equity and balance sheet. And uh, part B I think we'll just squeeze in at the end of our income statement part. So let's do our income statement. And uh, as you'll recall, uh, any income statement is just the revenues minus the expenses. Well, the good news here are our revenues, really just sales revenue. And here, oops, I'm up too high there. And here are all of our expenses. And uh, this one is, of course, a contra revenue account. So uh, what do we want to do? Well, let's make a, a title. It'll be a three-liner. Name of the company, Julie's Plumbing Supplies. Name of the statement, we are preparing an income statement. And for the, is it for a year? And how would I know? Uh, yes, it's for the year. How do I know? Because it asks, it says for the year ended. Uh, so, okay, it's for a year. For the year ended, March 31st. You really want to keep your eyes open. You need to know if it's for a year, for a month, or for a quarter, or for some other time period, but this one is indeed for a year. So we always start with revenues, then we work into our expenses, and then we compute our net income. But for a company with cost of goods sold, it works a little bit differently. First of all, our revenue will be sales, and we don't want to report what's called gross sales. We want to report net sales. Other profs and you really want to pay attention to your prof when you're getting into this chapter, may wish for you to do this in a different way from how I do it. I'm here to tell you they are not wrong. I am not wrong either. Uh, there are just multiple ways you may want to disclose this information. I say when I look at a company, professional company's uh, income statement, they disclose their sales net. They don't show the calculation. A lot of times when you're learning, the prof wants you to show the calculation, but I just like you to show net sales. And our net sales are the sales minus any returns and allowance. That's a contra revenue account. So 365 minus 25. If we had a discount, we would deduct that as well. But 365, oops, minus 25 means our net sales are 340. That's the number I'm going to report to shareholders on the face of my income statement. We deduct from that number the cost of goods sold. So just the next one down on our uh, trial balance here, it's $150,000. Sales minus COGS is gross profit. 340 minus 150 is $190,000. I'm actually going to jump ahead. It says compute gross profit percentage. That's part B. We're going to do it right now before we've even completed part A because we already have all the information we need. Gross profit divided by net sales is gross profit percentage. 190 divided by 340. And uh, let's call up my calculator here. 190, oh, oh, oh. Divided by 340, oh, 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 oh. 
our gross profit percentage is 0 0.55. I forget whether, I forget the third decimal there. Okay, 0 0.5588. Uh, so I'm going to round that up to 0 0.559 or 55.9%. What does that tell us now? That tells us the percentage we mark up our product. So when I sell a product, 55%, 56% is profit on the sale and 44% is the cost of the item. Uh, so it's a, a very healthy markup, but it really does depend on the company and the industry, right? There's some industries where the margins are very thin and some industries the margins are much healthier than that, much bigger than that. Uh, but the rule of thumb here is all else being equal, you'd rather have a higher percentage here. Bigger is uh, better if all else is equal. Okay, so we've com uh, completed part B, but we haven't completed part A. We still want to continue with our income statement. Now we just list our operating expenses, and it looks to me like our operating expenses run all the way down to here. I would call all of these items operating expenses. Interest expense is a non-operating item, and income tax expense is its own animal as well. Uh, so let's list our operating expenses. I wish I could just copy and paste them down there. Like I'm just going to be writing them down, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just going to go up and down and uh, write them all out. So I've got wages expense, which was $55,000. I've got bad debt expense, which is indeed an operating expense, $5,000. Advertising expense, $12,000. Utilities expense, uh, $2,000. Depreciation expense, uh, $6,000. Rent expense, and our rent expense is fifteen thousand dollars. And uh, last is insurance expense. And insurance expense was ten thousand dollars. So again, I'm just copying them off the list. So when I add up this list of expenses, I'm, I'm going to leave off the zero. So 55,000 plus 5 plus 12 plus 2 plus 6 plus 15 plus 10. I get 105 grand in operating expenses. So my gross profit minus my operating expenses gives me my operating income or my income from operations. My operating income 190 minus 105 is 85,000. I do have another expense. The other expense is interest expense. Again, I might have a few of them. If I did, I would just list and total them. The interest expense is $7,000. So there's only one other expense to worry about. This brings us down to our income before taxes. 85 minus 7 is $78,000. Our income tax expense was $21,000. So our net income. 78 minus 21 is $57,000. That is our profit for the period. Wow, this is such a long income statement. It doesn't all fit on the page. Dollar sign at the top of each column and by the bottom line of the statement. So you can see this company was profitable. Again, it's hard to say if this was a good or bad year, but we can certainly say that we made money, right? It's, it's not a, a money losing year. It's a year that we made. 57 grand. 
All right, so there's our income statement. There is our gross profit percentage, 55.9%. And again, that's an important number because it tells us basically the size of the markup, the average markup at the company. Uh, and uh, uh, useful to know that number. I hope this video has been helpful. In the next video, we will prepare a statement of changes in shareholders' equity for the company. Stay tuned.